Welcome to the 66th episode of Chatting with Chook, shooting right of center. And let me know if you can hear me. I'm pretty sure you can because I see the stupid sound bars. William S., welcome. Um, and I went back to the original title because last week, what's up, William Bell? Last week, I just called it, I forgot, Chook's Chat or something because I was hoping to trick YouTube into monetizing again because they... They demonetize all my chats, but not all my other videos, which doesn't make sense. But they, they still did. They they have some rubric where any time I live stream, they demonetize it because they think I'm talking politics or something. So I don't even care about that. So I'm not going to worry about it. So we're back to cho chatting with Chook, shooting right of center. Darren, welcome. Joe Morell's here. Oh, no, the Bigfoot guy. I'm still planning on a Bigfoot video. I've got some, some other. Oh, good. You guys can hear me. Grizzly Crazy, welcome. So, it, uh, we got a, a break in the heat, thank God, today. It's, uh, I don't know how many, we had over a week of just, it was almost 10 days of just 80s, where it was just horrible, and no one has AC in Alaska because you don't build houses with air conditioning because we haven't really needed them, but uh, especially on upper levels like this, you're, it's just, it can be like 90 degrees inside and you're just dying. Um, so it's cloudy today. It's pushed the smoke a little from the forest fires a little lower and it's still bad air quality, but at least it's not burning hot. Lab time. Welcome. Oh no, Mr. FNH is here. Mother effing gun guys. Welcome. 94 in Boise. Yikes. I brought back. Yeah, at least it's not 94 here. Now I kind of like the cool weather. I'm looking forward to fall and sweater weather. I brought back a nice van from Hawaii van you live in a van down by the river now chuck oh he brought uh he, he saw he brought an ac that was smart he should brought one for me and these nuts vision welcome oh fan three river blades welcome yeah so congratulations to chuck chuck got married i don't know if we're gonna see him with too many more new guns now that he's married because i've noticed it's funny he's now he's looking for guns for his wife I think that's a, a trick he's going to do. Hey, why don't we get you a new gun? That way he's able to still get new guns. But I don't know if he's going to get any more new guns. I'm enjoying my uh, gun crazy crazy gun buying binge. Well, I'm, well, I still can. I can tell you what, guys. What I'm, 104 in Central Florida. Oh, man, that sounds miserable. Be right back, Mr. FNH. Extremely hot in New York City. Bad air here. Oh, yeah. New York gets, uh, New York City gets uh, muggy and uh, you get that moisture in there, humidity. And then it, uh, in the subway, oh, that's nasty. That's tough. It should be fall all the time. Yeah, I've, I've come to love fall now because it's sweater weather. That's when all the hunting is, at least here. All our hunting happens in the fall, the good hunting at least. Well, except for spring bear, but it's cool in the spring too. I just picked up some 45 super rounds for my buddy who hand loads that are extreme penetrators. So they're the bullets themselves. Interesting. Oh, he's going to load them for you. Philip Porter, welcome. I want to talk about Bigfoot, one of your live chats. Yeah, let's talk about Bigfoot. I'm, gonna po I'm at a point where I like my guns too much to trade them. See Felton's. Uh, uh, so many. Yeah, I, I still. Uh, Chuck accused me of trading. He's like, "What did you trade? Okay, what did you trade?" Because he's wondering why I'm ordering all these new guns, and I'm, surprisingly, I didn't. I, I don't have anything that I really can give up to trade right now. I've just uh, been working my butt off these jobs. Jose Carrion, 110 in Arizona. Oh my god, that's horrible. Ninja, welcome. Humid here in Missouri. William Keller, welcome. Oh, man. Yeah, I guess we're lucky. Michael Kaler. Chook, it's super gunny. Somebody was calling Michael Kaler super gunny because he stays so freaking busy. He's always doing something. I don't know where he gets the energy. Bigfoot doesn't exist. Yeah, just poo on our parade, Chuck. Yes, it does. Bigfoot does exist. So, uh, yeah, very excited. So, it was kind of sad. Um, well, I... Let me tell you the story of my new gun purchases that I ordered. I haven't received them yet, but uh, 
I was so happy because I was, uh, I knew my brakes needed to be fixed. So I went into the dealership and I was like, yeah, let's do the brakes. And they did all the rugged, whatever maintenance. And when I got there, it was a very small bill. And they're like, you don't need your brakes. You have one more millimeter to go. And I was like, yes, I can get the shotgun I wanted. So I ordered the Black Aces Tactical Black on Walnut on Black Double Barrel Elmer Fudd Shotgun with Benelli Chokes. So I'm very excited about that. I ordered that. And then two days later, it's announced that, oh, surprise, the 365 XL just came out. And I was like, oh, I could have got that. And it would have got a lot more views and it would be, I actually want the Black Aces more. It's That's more interesting to me. But I really had wanted the 365 XL when it came out. And I was like, oh. But then I've just been working my butt off at the second job doing double shifts, which is miserable. But it doesn't matter because our summer is shot anyways, at least for me. Because I, I got children with asthma. I can't bring them out in the smoke. And some of the fishing, the river fishing has been good, but it's too smoky. And then the lake fishing I enjoy, it was too hot. Uh, you know, all the, the fish are very deep. They're very lethargic. They're not biting very much, at least the, the pike that I fish for. So I'm going to fish later when it's cooler. And so when I got nothing to do, don't have the kids for the weekend, I'm just working 16-hour shifts and uh, saving up money for these new guns. So 81 in Kendrick, Idaho. Jeez. Just got a finger, 1100 Glock. Uh, so what was it, a Gucci Glock? A, a Glock that's worth over $1,000? I'm back. Signal was low. Oh, welcome. Let me know if uh, I'm lagging at all because I, I allowed my kids to go online and play games and do Netflix. Uh, but I think it's going to be fine because I, I got the ultimate... Uh, the ultimate internet package, like my internet is super fast. So it, I don't, I don't know why I didn't allow them to do it before. It's uh, very fast and FUD gun for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a nice shotgun. Ninja saying, I, I, I can't wait to check it out. I want so many different guns, but I've grown attached to the ones I got. Any advice? Uh, slowly get more, just get one, one at a time. Bigfoot exists. I've been married to her for 17 years. William S is saying, uh, work hard equals gun money. Yeah, just save up for it. I heard it was a record high in 99 the other day. I was worried about Alaska. Yeah, it probably was somewhere here in South Central. Uh, my car read 91 at some point. Um, it's easily been in the 90s, especially on the different parts of town, not on the coast. But um, yeah, it was just miserable. Now I know how you guys feel on those. Uh, oh, it was a Gucci. Those hot states. Overtime. Yeah, I... I keep getting beat up at my second job, though. I, I work at a psychiatric facility. Uh, my second job, and patients attack me, and um, I got elbowed in the in the ribs last night or the night. Yeah, I think it was last night. And then doing a move, I you know blow my oblique out on that side and get elbowed. So I'm I don't know how long I keep doing this. I keep getting beat up. I just bought a Beretta APX carry. Those are nice. Single stack nine nano. That's an APX. So everybody's got to help Chuke's Patreon account so he doesn't have to work double shifts. That's right. And then I can just take it easy. I've exhausted all my sneaky methods to get him by the wife. Hey, you got to be sneaky. Holy short trigger release, Batman. Just pulled an image of the P365XL. It has the X5 type trigger. Yeah, I like that flat face trigger. And uh, the only thing I'm disappointed about is uh, if there's anybody know... If there's a, a cheaper option for the RMR, because it takes that RCMR, whatever, that proprietary one, but I looked it up, it's like 400 bucks. The only one that's available is like the 8X right now, but um, yeah, I wish they, they allowed like a small Vortex one for 150 bucks, or because so, eventually I'm going to have to get the, uh, the RMR for it. I think that's a cool option. Oh, thank you, William Killer. Here's some money for gun fun. Yeah, I need all the help I can get. One, yeah, I do uh, care coordination, like mental health stuff. But my second job, uh, psychiatric hospital, and I get beat up sometimes. And Chuck's probably cracking up about that. Randall Wilson, how'd you like the Revenant video? Yeah, that was good. It sent me a bit. That was my favorite bear attack. Even though you can tell it's CGI, that Revenant bear attack is uh, my favorite brown bear attack in a, in a movie. That's just uh, incredible. I got to watch it again. It's not even the money. I just fell in love with 
non-black colored guns and the wife will pinpoint. Oh, yeah. Well, I like everything's better in FDE. It shoots better in FDE. So, um, so that's what happened. I ordered the Black Aces Tactical. A few days later, the XL was announced, and I kind of uh, thought about it. And here's what's crazy is finally I made the decision this morning, so I called Juan. I was like, yeah, just order me an XL. And so I don't know if it, it, he goes through his distributor because he, he works with another uh, big gun store in town. Uh, or if he went straight to SIG, but they, they had 700 this morning and they were all sold out. So he's like, I got you on a wait list. So you can buy one somewhere else. I can take you off the wait list or, you know, you can stay on the wait list and get one when it comes up. And I was like, oh, screw that. I go to gun broker. So I got to gun broker and this can be dangerous because this is the first time I ordered on gun broker. Immediately got one, decent price, 579 you know, a little more with shipping, probably bought it up to 600 And then um, and you realize how easy it is to do a search for your FFL, plug them in, and then you just forward your FFL to email or they email them. Then they, they do their contact thing, and that's it because that's dangerous because there's some obscure guns I want to order. Now that I know how easy it is, I'm eventually going to order one of these obscure guns that I want. Obscure I finally got a toe clap 454 Casul. Good job. Three river blades in that. Shot a box of 20 Horner Day. Hand was numb. Awesome gun. Yeah, it must have been. Those lighter uh, rounds are painful. I retired from state corrections. No difference. Oh, they'll beat you up worse than, than those. Uh, Jose knows how it is. Especially if um, you're in Arizona. It's, it's brutal there. I want the P320 and FDE and the CZ Scorpion Evo and Battleship Gray. Oh, that would be cool. And that's, I actually wanted the P365 regular one. They had an FDE now that's 602, but I'm glad I got the XL because now I'm going to have night sights, uh, the RMR to put on it, the 15 round mag you can order for it. So I'm going to have some cool stuff. I'm back a third time, got kicked out of the chat this time. Oh man, they kicked you out. Weird. They probably targeted you because you earned so many chats. This Friday, getting ready for Mountain Lion Hunt. Oh, wow. That's exciting. I FFL trans to a computer shop named Wolf that doubles as a gun store. $20 transfers. Interesting. Yeah, I give all my, my business to Juan with EDC Alaska. Um, just because he's a you know a family friend of Felton. And uh, we're trying to help him out. And, uh, you know, he's a good friend. But I, I feel so bad because now I got a couple other friends that are FFLs. And, uh, you know, there's only so much, you know, the market gets saturated in Alaska. We don't have a big population. And so I'll talk to my friends sometimes who have FFLs and they'll be like, well, who do you order your guns from? I'm like, oh, I order all my guns from one, you know, EDC Alaska. And they just kind of look down I'm like, well, I have an FFL. Not many people are ordering for that. I just feel bad because, you know, once in a while, if it's like a pawn shop or a, a certain a uh, guy that has something that he advertised on one of the forums that I have to have. I'll get it from him. But otherwise, all my brand new stuff, I just go through Juan. But then I feel bad for my other friends that have FFLs. Just did my first gun broker yesterday myself. P120 TriStar 40. Wow, that those are uh, inexpensive. I haven't seen that. I like the TriStar shotguns. I'm interested in some of their duck hunting shotguns. Very affordable. But now I want a Stoger. Stoger's, uh, they're turkey too, unfortunately, but they're, I think they're a little better than the TriStar I wanted. But yeah, that was my first gun broker buy, and oh man, I, 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 that could be an addiction right there. Oh, thank you, Three River Blades is helping a guy out before I get uh, demonetized. They're, they uh, demonetized KS Gun Guy and some big channels. I'm staying under the radar. I still make like 100 bucks a month or whatever. So if I could just make it for a couple more months, I'll buy some ammo. I'll be happy. And this is a hobby anyways. Um, so, But I, I, I'm i so small. I'm small enough that I'm staying under the radar with the, the demonetization. So we'll see. But yeah, the gun broker is, oh man, that, that could be a, a horrible addiction right there. That's probably going to put me in the doghouse. I looked into my subscription to have missed about two weeks of gun content. You 
YouTube isn't notifying us. Oh man, yeah, they're doing that too. You know, some people don't get the bells. I'm not laughing at you. I don't want you to be hurt. Alaska Ballistics saying that. Chuck, Alaska Ammo is twenty dollars. Yeah, I think Juan he Juan used to charge like ten dollars uh, when he first got going to uh, help you know to get his business going. I think he charges a little more, but I'm still. Uh, you know, he's got a family and stuff. I, I don't mind paying a little more to Juan, so I just get all my transfers through him. My 24-inch barrel AR-15 with nozzle ballistic tips is ready to go on a mountain lion hunt. Oh, that's going to be interesting. 24, well, you're going to get some... I would use an AR-15 on a lion hunt. Online, I'm confused. If you had any experience with the 9mm Strybog, I'm leaning towards that purchase. No. What is a Strybuck? Or is it the Tristar he means? Philip Porter, careful of the SIG P320 platform and 40 cal. It's picky ammo. Seems not like the Hornaday critical defense in gold dots. It's a shame, too. Great pistol, 9mm. I shot my first P320, and I liked it, even though it's got some of those issues. And, um, you know, I'm more of a Glock guy anyway, so it doesn't affect me too much. But uh, yeah, my buddy got a full size, like I think it's the five inch barrel P320, and we shot it at Do It Right. Um, that that felt, I mean, the recoil was just minimal. It felt really good in the hand. I actually liked the way the uh, 365 felt too. I shot that for the first time, but I still prefer Glocks. I don't know why. I'm used to shooting Glocks more, and lab time's here, welcome. And the, the 43X, I still prefer that over the P365. We'll see. I I may like the P three sixty five XL, but I, I I still think I'll go with the Glock. My plan is is to shoot a thousand rounds through the P three sixty five XL or more, and just do some spin off videos, test it with Chuck, and do it right, and just you know see if it malfunctions, check that striker drag, and then uh, I doubt it because up here in Alaska, a good Russian AK goes for 900 bucks but somebody might want a new one in alaska and trade me uh the p60 365 xl for a decent ak i don't want a junky one but if it's a russian you know a decent one that goes for 900 up here i may try to do that uh because i think but i may fall in love with it with the rmr and all that well i'll have to keep it for a while because i need to afford an rmr for it so uh, but I, I just like the 43X. I don't think anything. That has been my summer carry. I went to an event all weekend in a t-shirt, just a smaller size t-shirt, with this uh, 43X. And for the first time, uh, you know, when I had the Glock 19, it was always like a huge bump, a big old block there. But for the first time, I was bending over and picking stuff up. It didn't print at all. And for the first time, I just, oh, I, I don't have to worry about it. I hate printing. I hate it when everybody at the children's event sees you with the, oh, that guy's got a giant gun on his belt. Um, it just felt so good to be, you know, just completely concealed. I like being concealed. James Carey, welcome. Connecticut. Are you in the Poconos? Checking in late from Calgary, but checking in. On the, Thomas Pickering, welcome. Reloading for plinking is worth it for me and my son. I said, I need to start reloading more. I said I was going to reload. I got that new bench and everything. And, oh, I'm going to reload in the winter because I'll have time. But I never have time. And this winter, hopefully, Chuck and I will start reloading again. Lab time. Got a Stoger M3 5000. That's what I want. And um, Mark III. M3K, both are no no issues. M3 500 gets used hard. for, And that's the 3500 is the one with the... Three and a half inch magnum shells, right? See, that's what I want. That's what I want, but I don't think it's going to happen this duck season because I got the Black Aces shotgun. Black Aces is so good, I kept changing my mind. But um, even though it's only 18 and a half inch barrel, it, uh, it's got the Benelli chokes. And to duck hunt with a FUD double barrel shotgun is going to be super fun, I think. And it's uh, Chuck thought I was just going to have that bear claw and I was like, oh yeah, that's really smart, Chuck, to, why don't you go hunting with a pistol grip? And I told him, no, it's got the regular stock, Chuck. Get with the program. Old man has to have his 1911. Uh, and now that I know, uh, how easy Gunbroker is, there's some, uh, 
obscure 1911s. Well, one in particular that hopefully I'll order this summer if it doesn't go away. I'm not going to tell you what it is because then other people will get it before I do. You see the new black G40? Yeah, I did. I think it's the 43X, too. Um, that looks sick. It, it looks so much better than uh, this stupid bitone. And all this has grown on me, but it's, it's this weird gray, plasticky looking color. I don't know why they did that. If they would have kept this black, uh, I think it would have been better. But yeah, I did see that they, they came out with the black ones, and uh, that's probably smart. Uh, cause they're much better than the bitone. I've never liked bitones, but this one I like, it's just grown on me. I shot my Fostec Echo 2 trigger and PSA lower attached to my FNH FN patrol carbine upper only 60 rounds. But it was incredible. Buy it while you can from classic 364 with insurance. And that's the, oh, that's the one shot when you pull it and then you let it go in another shot so you could kind of uh, fake the, uh, before they, they're, they're going to make those illegal if they did it to bump stocks. I can't believe they already haven't tried. But it, it simulates full auto because you're going, bump up, you're doing all these double taps as fast as you can pull the trigger. Um, and it's way better than a bump stock. Wow, that is a good, you know, I need a, a Fostec Echo 2. That's a second generation. I need one of those for my AR too. I already killed six mountain lion with 223. Nice. Yo, yeah, oh, the 43X, yeah, yeah, all black, and the 48s, they, they look good. Alaska Dream Life, welcome. The P120 TriStar, oh, it's a CZ SPL1 clone that I couldn't pass up. You know, the um, 300, and it's, yeah, I knew it would be a good Cajun Eyes with upgrades. Yeah, um, that uh, Tank Folio Elite Match 10 millimeter I had was a CZ75 clone, and they did a good job with that. I really like that such a simple design i think even the clones are nice i got a per ban ak-47 hungarian with the ab nice i'm game for reloading when you are yeah well, it's, we need to reload as soon as it snows that's what i said last year got 43x sucks it's been kept my taurus g2c oh wow i like th i'm interested in that g2c but that's the double stack one they also have the the Millennium single stack one, too. I'm going to buy a Dylan 550 progressive press to reload. That's the way to go. Otherwise, it's too slow. Except if you're precision rifle or hunting rifle hunting, then single stage is fine. Saving my money forever. Need everything. Gonna loads of money to make the first round. Barely been shooting two. Killing me softly. Yeah, but you have almost every gun in existence, so shouldn't complain too much. With a bayonet with an AK-47. You know what I want is the... Yeah, there's so much now. A Mosin, uh, not the 90, I don't know. I forgot which one, but it's the smaller Mosin, the shorter barreled one with that folding attached bayonet deal. I like those way better than the big long ones. Um, they're 450 bucks now up here in Alaska, which is kind of ridiculous. I mean, it's still affordable. I just have to accept that's how much Mosins are now. Maybe I could find a cheaper one on Gunbroker now that I'm doing that. Old Doc Sims, welcome. Good evening. Thomas Osteen, welcome. Yeah, 12 plus 1. That's not bad. Andrew Smith saying that. Shot my 10 millimeter in 357 today. 357 still got more juice. You can see it and feel it. That's what I say too. That's that's all we talk about on this chat. How's 10 millimeter versus 357? Yeah, the M44, M54. That 44, M40. That's the one I want. I had one before, but um those Mosins are nice. And I have to admit, when I was first getting into guns, like almost a decade ago, I was one of those Bubba's that went, oh, I, I want to, uh, you know, sporterize this Mosin, Mosin and put it uh, this ugly, cheap plastic stock on it and cut the barrel down and, it, and put a stupid mag action on it. But um, now I see those and it's just disgusting. Those just, I can't believe that shows that I've uh, evolved. I've evolved from just being an evil Bubba like Chuck to a uh, more refined uh, gun enthusiast because I would never do that to a Mosin. That's sickening when you see people do that to Mosins. I like sporterizing other rifles, but not a not a Mosin. That's you got to keep that. Bump stock is a class one felony. 
in Florida, 10 years in prison, first offense. I thought it was everywhere now. Shook, it's a weird trigger pull. Think smooth, 13 points, two stage, and full release in order to double tap. It's kind of odd, but super intuitive. After 50 rounds, a mag was gone like in a sick man. I would love one of those. My first gun broker purchase was an antique flawless M39. Okay, that was the that's the longer one, right? Yeah, it's a federal crime, I believe. Alaska Dream. Still carry my old Ruger Security 6. Those are nice. Nothing wrong with a Ruger Security 6. Hey, Chook, tuning in from Pennsylvania. Welcome, Chris Chapman. Anyone have a Smith & Wesson AR-15? They're on sale for 400 now locally. Interesting. I've had an M&P AR-15. It was fine. I would actually, even though uh, nothing wrong with PSA, I would probably, if if I could get an M&P, well, uh, you just said Smith & Wesson. I don't know if it's him. If I could get an M&P AR, I'd prefer that over a PSA, but Nothing ever went wrong with any of the PSAs trucker I had. Loved that gun. Bought it for six hundred. Sold it for nine seventy five. Wait a minute, an M thirty nine was six hundred bucks. Thought they were way cheaper than that. Uh, I have an M forty four and a ninety one thirty. Yeah, the ninety one thirty is the longer one. You can get a Mosin here in Idaho pretty cheap at pawn shop or gun shows, 150 to 200 give or take. Oh, so if I, I could probably find one for that price on Gun Broker, then why am I going to pay Alaska prices and pay $450 for uh, that Mosin when I could get it? See, that's why Gun Broker is awesome. Because I won't have, they, they charge more for everything uh, in Alaska, uh, even the guns. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't have all the bear cone rounds like you, but. Have you tried an SKS cheaper? Uh, I love SKSs. Uh, Chuck and I got in a fight over an SKS, and I accidentally hurt him. But um, SKSs, you, they used to be super cheap, too. I, they, they weren't as cheap as Mosin's, but you used to get one packed in Cosmoline for, what, 250 bucks, 275 Uh SKSs are... Also in the 450 range here in Alaska, easy. They have gone up in price. I would prefer an SKS over a Mosin for sure. I still want a Mosin um, because it's got that huge round, the, the 54 rimmed, uh, which is really good for Alaska hunting. And it would be super cool. Like, how cool would it be if you, you know, say, I just killed a caribou with my Mosin again? So, M39 is the fin version. Oh, okay. That is that is more expensive. Yeah, the, the finished ones are nicer too. Better trigger, better wood, pistol grip, better sights. Yeah, they're beautiful. Sometimes you get really good wood on the fill a closet with them if you can't afford it. I doubt you regret it 30 years. It's the M&P 2.0 for $400. That's a good deal. Some people ask way too much for a muzzle. Yeah, they do, but the prices have just gone up everywhere, especially here. But I could still get a good deal on Gun Broker. Some people, uh, Andrew Smith, armslist.com is good too. Andrew, oh yeah, armslist is good. We I've used that before. There's not as many uh, people advertise on armslist as they do Alaska's list up here. Let me ask, I've been trying to find a Spanish Mauser in 308, but they are way overpriced on Gun Broker. How much are they? I'm done with Alaska pr list. I bought a used HK VP9 for four seventy five, dollars then found one brand new online for four ninety nine. dollars uh, yeah. I don't blame you. The nice thing about Alaska's list is you can just get it immediately. You don't have to wait. Sometimes when you're really impatient like me, it's kind of nice. SKS costs too much now, though. Oh, always like $400. Rather have an AK-47, A450, but I have a one SKS. So they're still $400 now. Yeah, I mean, an AK is better. If you're going to pay $400 for an SKS, might as well get a $800 AK-47. SKSs are good rifles, though. I thought about an M14 civilian version, but concerned about the weather issues with rust and winter snow regions. What do you think? Um, I don't know if you take care of it. I, some people say they get flash rust up here. I've never got any rust in my safes up here. Um, rust in winter. Um, yeah, we're in a snow region and we don't 
I've never gotten any rust on anything. And just, you know, keep, just get some wipes, some of those uh, REM oil wipes. I need to get better about that, wipe everything down every few months. With the Mosin Double Tap, have a Nosler bullet. Shot an elk with my buddy's Mosin a few years back, no problem. So, yeah, 762 by 54 rimmed. That would be awesome shooting an elk. Those things are huge, too. Elk's bigger than caribou. My patience was the only thing keeping me from ordering online and getting a suppressor. I regret passing on about six or more FNH FN15s, six to seven hundred each at auction. You can't buy them all, though. I was lucky to get. Yeah, uh, they have that auction. You can bid on GunBroker. Do you guys do that? Because I was thinking uh, they have the the buy now price, like on eBay, but then you can put in a bid because the 1911 I want. It's got a starting bid at 550. Nobody's even bid on it. I'm thinking if I just said, you know, 575, 600, I would get it. But then it's got the buy now for 750, and I'm not going to do that. So, have you guys done that? Have you you done the bid on Gun Broker and done that instead of the buy now option? Because I'm interested on how that works. But. Yeah, so I'm hoping, uh, I forgot that when you order long guns, sometimes they, sh they ship them ground, and it'll take like five days to get up here, but I think when you order a pistol, they have to do it two-day air, so I'm going to be getting the SIG before I get the Black Aces Tactical, so we'll see. I'm hoping to get it uh, by Friday so I can do a, a first impression review and get that up Saturday morning. FN-15 patrol rifle. I've always wanted one of those. Those are nice. I want one of those uh, HK G36 carbines now, though. Someday. I've bid and did good on a couple. Okay, so you just wait the whatever through the week, and if nobody outbids you, then you get it. I contacted my guy. You have a guy on GunBroker? How do I get a guy on GunBroker? Ask him if he could come down. Oh, just the individual seller. If he could come down on price, he did in free shipping. Oh, okay. So you can message them. So the the guy who's selling the 1911 for 750, I could just message him and say, "Hey, if you put the uh, buy now price down to 625, I'll buy it right now." And then just refresh it. Never use GunBroker. My mom has though. What? Mr. FNH has all those guns. He's never used GunBroker. Oh, there is an announcement I wanted to make. Um, I should announce this before when it was like a kind of top secret. But uh, so Buffalo Boar is teasing out a special ammo for Alaska. Uh, the uh, Buffalo Boar, and that's kind of what, uh, even though they didn't officially say it, Underwood has kind of they've said before that this the Alaska. The extreme penetrators and extreme hunters we send to Alaska with our distributors, we designed for Alaska. I wish they would have put Alaska extreme penetrator or something. But Buffalo Boar is teasing out very soon an Alaska round. Uh, I'm hoping it's hard cast or maybe it's copper. I, I haven't seen them do a lot of copper. But Buffalo Boar is making uh, some kind of big boar bear defense a uh, bullet loaded in a cartridge for Alaska. And what me and Chuck need to do is get a hold of Alaska Ammo and see if the owner will let us kind of be privy when it first comes in, if we could get a box to test. And I'm very excited about that, though. Need to borrow the P365 to show the contract. Yeah, I do. Sunak's got the, the P... Um, He's got the P365, and uh, yeah, we're definitely going to compare it with the XL and the Glock 43 that Chuck has and the 43X that I have. I just want to do a full comparison of it all. By chance, since Alaska is a stone's throw away from Russia, do you, I can see Russia right now out my window. Do you guys get any black market parts from there? Kind of like running drugs, but gun parts. And I doubt it. Uh, maybe with the Russian mob, there's a big Albanian Russian mob out here. Maybe they do, but I, I'm not in the black market, that's for sure. Um, no, the only thing we get is those little Russian dolls that they open up and there's another small one in there. Get them at the Saturday market downtown. I don't think we get it. We don't even 
get much stuff from Russia here. Comrade. Sunik has a uh, Russian hat he wears. He's even got a Russian name. FN15 FN a Mosin? No, I don't think it is. Sorry, chat froze. Had to restart. Andrew Smith and I. Matryoshka dolls, Joe Morrell saying. That my grandpa, M14 Marine Scout Sniper. He was in Vietnam. Nice. I see Venezuela and New York, lab time saying. Oh, of course I'm pronouncing it wrong. Ma Trushka. The Babushkas have Matrushkas. Come to Idaho this year. Let's kill some deer and elk. Oh, I wish. What am I going to do? I, I want to go to uh, Montana for Thanksgiving, but I don't think it's going to happen this year. I'd like to go back to New York, but that's not going to happen this year either. Oh, a uh, little bit disappointed. And uh, Michael, oh, Michael Kaler didn't get that tag anyways, but uh, Chuck might have got the uh, tag. But anyways, the, the easy tag for Alaska residents uh, is the Tier 1 caribou, the Unit 13 subsistence caribou hunt. Uh, I used to get it every year, but now I, I don't want to be trapped in that unit because if you accept it, they're like, oh, now you or no one in your household can hunt caribou or moose anywhere outside of Unit 13, and you're kind of screwed. But uh, they announced last week or this week that it's bull only again, which sucks. That makes it very hard to get a caribou because before you could just, the first caribou I saw, I would shoot. Uh, but I'm going to go kind of guide, I guess you'd say, a family member, help them get their their tag, and now it's bull only. So you got to look at them really closely. They all have antlers. Even the females have antlers. So you got to make sure it's a bull. And usually if, you know, there's a, a, a small herd of, let's say, 12 caribou, it's usually all fawns and females, except for maybe there might be two or three bulls. In the group, and then you got to figure out which one's a bull. It makes it hard, it makes it very hard. So that that's very disappointing. They're doing the second year in a row uh, that is bull only for the tier one hunt. So I don't know if you guys, you Alaska guys, knew about that. If you're going to do that hunt, but I'm planning on hunting other stuff. You can message the sellers on Gunbroker, make a deal before the end of sale. I ah, see. I didn't know that. I did not know that. That. Uh, that's even more dangerous for me to know that because now I'm going to be messaging people. I carried a lowly Glock 42 today with, oh, that's the 380 one. Williams fiber optic sights and a Ghost three and a half pound trigger mod. Incog Eclipse holster I got for twenty dollars. Interesting. Someone in my family kills a deer on Thanksgiving for the last thirty years. Thanksgiving morning is the day to kill whitetails. I agree because nobody's out hunting as much on Thanksgiving. I like hunting on Thanksgiving. That was the best in New York. You guys have Canada geese in Alaska? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. That's why I want the the Stoger that takes the three and a half inch magnums because of all the geese we have. Um, and they're hard for me to get too because I, I don't have a duck boat and we wade out to our secret spots and once in a while we get a shot at some geese. Kind of have to be there at the right time. I'm, I'm, we're going to do good this year because I'm going to be out there uh, uh, September 1st. I'm going to first day when duck hunting opens. I'm going to be out there. Caliber 42. It's a 380. The G42 is a 380. New York, ouch, to many refs and high taxes. Yeah. Regulation. Oh, okay. Regulation. How's the air down there in Anchorage? We're smoky up here. It's been bad. We had a couple horrible days with the, it was considered dangerous just yesterday. Uh, you can still smell it. It's frustrating. That's ruined my whole summer. Um, but now I can just work all these double shifts and just wait for the hunting season. It, it's, some of the fires are just going to burn until fall time until it cools off. It's It's been awful. The FN-15 is the FN Herschel's version of the AR-15. Patrol rifle is the law enforcement version with the button rifled bear. Yeah, they are nice. Those are really nice. Those are either in Canada or Scottsdale. I'm going to get over the counter bear tag in Idaho this year since I didn't draw any tags in Nevada this year. So that you got to buy one then. I'll check them out. Remington 870 Express holds three and a half inch, but only shot turkeys with it. 
Oh man, thunder chickens. I wish we had turkeys up here. 90, oh yeah, Fairbanks is extra hot. 94 degrees, that's miserable. How come your big six didn't include a shock? I know, Thomas Pickering said that. I did that last Saturday's video. I realized that after I uploaded it, I was like, oh, I didn't have a 12 gauge in there. And really you could replace the 4570 with a 12 gauge and it would almost be better because you got slugs just as powerful as the 12 gauge, just as, or as the 4570 12 gauge slug. Uh, about, I mean, they're for stopping a bear, you can't really get better than 12 gauge slug um, at close range, but uh, you can just do so. We do so much with 12 gauge shotguns up here. A lot of people like 410s too, but yeah, I, that was a mistake I made. I'll have to do another video just about shotguns for Alaska. Come to where I am, William S. We're loaded with Canada geese on Long Island, big resident population, and the migratory flock in the winter. I, that's painful for me to see. When I went to New York, because I've only been duck hunting seriously for a few years now, well, if you can call it seriously, but um, when I lived in New York, I didn't duck hunt. I didn't pay attention, but yeah, I, I was driving around western New York, and I went by one of those fields. I don't know what it was, like a wheat field that was flooded or something, but I literally saw like you know, 2,000 ducks and geese, like just, or, you know, 1,000 geese, just all in that field, like in a big flock and landing. And I mean, we, we don't see that up here because we don't have those grain fields. But uh, yeah, I almost had a heart attack when I saw that. That was in Western New York. That's the link to my video. Uh, it blocked it. Which video is it? Mr. FNH has a video. Teresa Rizzo is here. What unit are you in, Andrew? Gerald, welcome. Sorry I'm late. Had a meeting at the Legion. Oh, nice. Unit 4, North Idaho. You could leave my house and probably find a bear in one hour. Uh, North Idaho, that's the best part of Idaho, too. That's where the bears and the wolves and the mountain lions, everything. So I hunt all over Idaho, but up here is awesome for bears. Yeah, North Idaho is the way to be. That's in the mountains. Now we have grizzlies and shit too. I've seen two last year's. Two. Wow. We hunt the corn and oat fields in the winter. Oh, okay, for the geese. Yeah, that's amazing. I wish we had flocks like that up here. You may want to hop on FN America. Just look up the FN 15. You'll be drilling in no time, buddy. Posted the video link if Chuk approves it. I, it wouldn't even let me look at it. Oh, wait. Here. Show. But did it show it? Uh, I hit show. But it's still blank. It just says that's the link to my video, Chuk. It's not letting... I think that's a new thing where they won't let you post video links. Plenty of wolves. Yeah. Northern Idaho. Pheasant hunting is fun. Yeah, it is. We don't have pheasants up here, except in Homer, a uh, um, an old pheasant farm uh, was in Homer 30 or 40, you know, probably 20 years ago. I don't know, but they all escaped, and now there is a local population of pheasants. It's warm enough in Homer, Alaska, that uh, these pheasants have been thriving, and they're the classic black ringed pheasant or whatever. You hear them my boss freaked out because he's from uh, Michigan and he loves hunt, hunting pheasants. And uh, he heard one down at the McDonald's in Homer. He was like, that sounds like a pheasant. They're not native to Alaska. And he was just freaking out. Like, why am I hearing a pheasant? And then he looked over and a pheasant flies by and he's just like, what the heck is going on? But yeah, they escaped. So we have a, we have a bunch of pheasants in Homer, which is interesting. Otherwise, like up here, we don't. We just have the, uh, for upland game, we just have the uh, ptarmigan in the mountains, different couple species of ptarmigan or five species, and then we got the grouse, which they call spruce hens, but no pheasants. You can't post video links. I don't think so. It's not showing up. What's the name of the video, Mr. FNH? Thanks for your grandfather's service. Greatest generation ever. I agree. Try it again, Chook. Okay, I'm still not seeing it. No joke, come up here, William. We can get on them. We kill two bears every year and haven't shot one on the bait probably six years. My grandpa was a Marine Scout sniper. Yeah, I'm hopefully going to get a bear this 
I know, right? Where to go? I will get a bear just if I have the time. I'm going to get one this September probably. Maybe even late August. We'll see. I actually have a couple places to bear hunt this fall now. Blue Sox Lake. That's where I'm going. Mr. Finish. Yeah, it's not letting you post. Not seeing the link. It will not let you post video links that I can see. But YouTube's probably blocking it. Just tell us the name of the video. But, yeah, so I got the, uh, the Black Aces Tactical isn't going to be here until Monday. And I'm hoping that the new SIG comes in the next few days because they do the second air, second day air shipping. So just, I don't know if uh, uh, on Gun Broker, do they send you the tracking information or do they send it to your FFL? Because I know... Um, when you order stuff online through the company, they usually send you the tracking. And that's what they did to Black Aces sent me the tracking, not my FFL. So I know more about when it's coming than he does. Did you ever pick up your bear hide? No. I have two bear hides to pick up. Oh, don't remind me of that. I just bought two guns. So now I can't get my bear hides. And those, uh, I haven't got any calls though. I hope they're not just so mad they're gonna keep them. Uh, usually I get calls. Every few weeks, come get your bear hide. Come get your bear hide. You promised to pick up your bear hide. Uh, but yeah, I have two different black bear hides that I need to pick up from two different taxidermists. That's my problem. If I kill another bear, I'm going to have to go to Wasilla to get it uh, tanned because nobody will accept. Oh, you're the guy that, you know, you brought in your bear hide two years ago. You still haven't paid the other half. So... My grandma was a Green Beret and other grandpa was a Marine in Vietnam. Insane stories. It was a grandpa I probably met. I go Yellowstone Mountain for a grizzly bear hunt. That would be nice. Talk about a force multiplier. But he had some stories too. And now there's a message held for review. Let's see if this is it. No, they would send my grandpa Smith with 11 other guys to try to hunt down 300 plus Viet Cong. What the... Uh, uh, tracking will go to you when shipped. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't shipped it yet. Disappointing. Better ship it in the morning. The video is titled FNH FN 15 Patrol Carbine. All right, I'll check that. I've always wanted one of those. Oh, waiting on your bear, too. Well, see, mine's done. I just haven't. <laughs> I just don't want to go pay for it, so I haven't done it. It's kind of a, a jerk move, I guess. I should go pick it up. But I just bought two guns. I can't get it now. My buds in correction conduct a predator hunt twice a year. Nice. No judgment. I just fixed my car, but I was thinking of buying a new gun and worry about the car later. Yeah, priorities. You got to have priorities. What is your 10 millimeter grizzly protection round? Um, I just go with the extreme penetrators from Underwood. Although I probably will get the... Uh, federal, I don't know if it's the bear clots, the bonded, jacketed, lead round. Um, on some of Chuck's tests, that penetrated way better than the extreme penetrator, which is interesting because it's cheaper, so I'm probably going to stick with that federal round. Um, if I get the KKM barrel, I'll use hard cast because hard cast is always better. Buffalo boar, probably. Andrew Smith, men like that have helped keep America safe. Much appreciated, sir. Agreed. My grandpa killed 98th. Um, what else was I going to talk about? Yeah, so the uh, Buffalo Boar, they're going to tease out the new Alaska-specific ammo. Mr. FHS, Vietnamese, grizzly crazy saying, hard cast sucks. I've always liked hard cast, but I just use the copper because uh, it's so much cleaner in the gun. George John Smith is here. My grandpa says they didn't want to find 300 people no matter how bad us you are. Death sentence. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. 300 people. Ah, the kombucha. It's good. I forgot what else I... I always forget. I got to start writing down the, the notes I was going to talk about. Much 
love and respect for that man, Mr. FNH is saying. Uh, what else is going out in the uh, gun and hunting world right now? I'm just going to, uh, yeah, I need that time. That's what I need is time because I'm going to get a bear hopefully this fall, August, September. Uh, duck hunting will start September 1st, which is inconvenient because that's when all the other hunting happens. That's one of what my buddy said. It's like, why would I hunt moose and bears September 1st? Or why would I hunt ducks September 1st when I can hunt moose and bears? And he does have a point. I really like duck hunting though because it's easy. It doesn't break your back like moose hunting. Moved to Blue Ridge Mountain in North Carolina. Joey Bag of Donuts did. I ordered a bear. I border a bear sanctuary in the Pisgah National Forest. Lots of black bears, some very large. I think I'll try bear hunting this season. You know what? They're probably larger than our bears because they eat apples and grains there. Our bears don't get as big because they're not on apple orchards. George John Smith, when do you start reloading? Well, we're hopefully going to start this winter. Um, I got a buddy that reloads for 270. I want to just go to his house and we'll uh, we'll do some 270 year military training. Now, I'm, I'm just a contractor. I'm not in the military. Chuck isn't either. Chuck would never get accepted into the military. Uh, my dad was in uh, Vietnam, though. He's in the uh, cavalry. Come to Idaho, man. I'm telling you, I got three big bulls and one mega bull elk almost tied to a tree. I know where they are. Oh, man, it's so tempting. Don't tell me that. Do you have a mountain lion in Alaska, Chuk? Oh, uh, yeah, some made it up here. Um, only a couple. Like, literally, you could probably count the number of mountain lions on two hands. Uh it was just a uh, urban legend, but then uh, oh, it was probably eight years ago. Fish and Game actually uh, put out in the newspaper. They did confirm uh, a confirmed sighting of a mountain lion on the Kenai Peninsula by a biologist. So uh, they've made their way from British Columbia or whatever over the Rockies, over the Canadian border. They're slowly making their way here, but you you probably never see one in your lifetime. But yeah, there's a couple mountain lions here. My grandpa, he lived with me in Kendrick, Idaho. I have 48 guns at my grandpa. He has 28 guns. See, I'm in it. That's my goal is to get 48 guns someday. I've been followed by a mountain lion once I know for sure. They're the creepiest animal in the world. Oh yeah. Peer killers. Yeah, they'll stalk you. Chook, one of my favorite Alaskans. What's up? Justin, welcome. Jonathan Dardu. Hey Chook, I just picked up a Smith & Wesson M&P Shield 9mm. My first concealed gun and the first semi-auto. Excited to take it out to the range. Got some Federal HST. What ammo do you recommend for self-defense? I like Federal HST. I, that's what I would say to get. And I I used to be kind of anti-shield. I was an anti-shieldite for the longest time but until um, I actually held one and shot one. Um, I especially like that shield in 40 that Chuck got. Uh, with the night sight, that deal through PSA. So now I'm a fan of shield. I, If I had that 40 shield, I would probably carry that even over uh, my Glock 43X some days because um, it's a single stack 40 and it's uh, they're nice. So yeah, good choice. Uh, that's a good price too. I'm actually a fan of shields now. Where is Kendrick, Idaho, Grizzly Crazy? Reloading is a good hobby, particularly in Alaska. You can save a lot on ammo make great friends like Jake. Yeah, it is. Um, I need to get better at it. The only thing we've loaded together is nine millimeter and we figured out how to do that and they shot fine, but I need to reload uh, my hunting like rifle ammo and 4570. I'd love to reload for that. Mr. FNH, I'm envious, sir. All my male elders are past except for a few uncles. I only get to see once a year. Nice being with them. Jose, AZ has to relocate them to keep other animals flourishing. The mountain lions, I reload about 1,600 rounds of 9mm every two weeks. Six cents a round is not too shabby since I shoot about 800 rounds a week. Oh, so you're still stacking it up. I wish I could do that. Chickawees, hey Chuk, and you the other guys? Winchester has 25% rebate on primers. It expires 815, interesting. 8.15. Well, 8.10 is when the caribou tags begin. August 10th is the, is the big subsistence hunt. And then sometimes on the 11th, other hunts are up in. And then on the 20th, they open up other units. So that's coming. 
A shield is nice, but they need a double stack. I need more than eight or seven. Yeah, I just like them for comfort, though. That's why I like the 43X, because it, it holds 10 plus 1. It's a good round by all accounts, John. 147 green. I agree. I, I like the HST. Chuck, how's that 458 SOCOM doing? Still have it. What have you taken with it? Oh, no, I don't have it. It's That was when I was a really bad trader. Um, I traded that. 458 SOCOM. It was actually a good deal. I traded it for a brand new uh, Sitka jacket, Sitka gear jacket. It had the tag and everything. So I got like, um, you know, almost a $600 Sitka jacket. And then I got like five or $600 cash on top of that. But the guy really wanted it. But I wish I still had the 458 SOCOM. Michael Kaler has one. That's a, those are cool ARs. Just the uppers themselves. Oh, okay, so they do relocate the mountain lions. Oh, they should just kill them. We got a hive extension, so the bigger mag is now 10 plus 1. Oh, it's perfect. For the shield. Is a city in Lata County, Idaho. Hmm. Sitka, Canada Goose. What does that mean? Just insane. Wait, what is this? Oh, okay. It's in Sitka and took kind of goes. Latah County's in Moscow and Lewiston. Yeah, no problem. You want fun? Reload 4570 with 230 grain cast bullets and fill the case 70% with Trail Boss. Great for plinking and saves your shoulder. Interesting. Thomas Pickering saying that. Yeah, that's what we need to do. I, I'd like to just do some exotic reloads in 4570, like order our own extreme penetrators from Underwood and uh, do that. Oh, those women jogging around here. That could be me one day. I'm planning on buying a Dylan 550 Progressive Press very soon. Oh, that'll be sweet. Anyone use a 270 or 7 mil in Alaska? Yep, I've got a 270 and Chuck has a 7 mil. And I, I was surprised how many people use a 270 in Alaska. There's a little, It's actually the perfect caribou gun. I feel bad for this one guy. Uh, he had a, a 270, and his son put a 30 out six round in it and jammed the bolt shut. And then uh, this beautiful bull came up like 80 yards away, and he was just like, yes, yes. And then he realized that he was screwed, and he couldn't get the 30 out six round out of his 270. Uh, he was mad at his son. For my trail gun, I carry a. Plus, plus P plus Buffalo Boar 44. That's a good choice. I honestly don't know how well my follow-up shots would be since it's so powerful. Ah, it's something to think about. I got a Dylan 650 a load. 940 and 10 millimeter. Nice. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys saw it. Chuck uh, finally put his video up of the, the new HST 10 millimeter, and I guess it's dismal, like. That's uh, disappointing. I, I always think of HST, Federal HST, is very powerful, you know, hot. 9mm, it's a great round. I think it's the best you can get 9mm almost, you know, for hollow points. But uh, I guess it's loaded super weak for 10mm, so that's disappointing. You have to load your own HST, I guess. Should I trade my Henry 4570 for a 458 SOCOM upper? I own two 4570s and really curious about your opinion. Uh, I would say yes if the other 4570 is a nice one. I, I don't know a lot about Henry's. I like them. I'm more partial to Marlins. But, uh, yeah, if you got two 4570s, I'd say go for it because those 458 SOCOMs are cool. I would. I own two 270 Winchesters and own three 7 millimeter Remington Magnum. So those are nice rifles. William S. wants a Dillon 550, but my Lee Progressive keeps hanging in there. Oh, if it's progressive, yeah, just keep running that into the ground. Can't talk to the wife into giving the thumbs up while the Lee is still working. Sabotage it, break it. What do you think? A 200 grain jacketed hollow point at 1,100 feet per second. Is weak in telling me? Is that what the box says? He said that it... Uh, Maybe it maybe it uh, chronographed way lower than that. I didn't finish the whole video, but I just remember him talking about how weak it was. 
Are they saying that it's going 1,100 feet? Because that sounds good to me. But Chuck was like, I I might as well be carrying a 9 millimeter than this 10 millimeter. It's loaded so weak. So it's probably getting a lot less than what the box said. I think I'm hitting the range tomorrow with the 308 I bought two years ago and haven't shot yet. Holy cow. Yeah, you got to shoot it. Grizzly Crazy owns four 4570s. Of course he does. All right, see, that's what I need. I need four 4570s and 48 guns. I own three 270s and two 7mm rim mags. Love them both. Do you have any different heads for each or just change the dies for each caliber? He's asking lab time. I would want to get the extra deals where you don't have to change change them out every time. When will you be testing the new Buffalo Board Dangerous Game 10 millimeter round? Uh, if that's the Alaskan one, is that the new Alaska Pacific? Um, hopefully soon. Uh, Chuck and I want to get a box as soon as it comes out. We need to talk to, uh, I know Alaska Ammo is going to be a distributor for that. Ninja, I want a 10 millimeter. haven't got one yet because most rounds are loaded like 40 cal and like my... Yeah, that's the problem. Is a lot of the factory rounds are loaded. Uh, that's why I like Underwood. They we typically get more than what the box says on Underwood. Eleven hundred is the box velocity. All right, it must have been below that. Then I'm gonna have to watch the whole video. It came out this morning. What do you think about the Underwood hard cast with the coating they put on them? You think that will eliminate any Fallon? I think it will. I've thought about getting that because. That would be nice. That's a way to get around the uh, that ribbon of uh, lead they, they put on the Glock barrels. Even though people say it doesn't happen, it, it does. Love my Glock 20. You got it because of your videos. Oh, good. If I could just save someone's life with that one video, it would have all been worth it. 7mm hits hard as F, though. Every deer I have ever shot with them were dead. Second, I pulled the trigger. Oh, yeah, it's a Magnum. Andrew Smith is saying that. Um, the only problem with the Barnes ammo, it didn't open up. And uh, when Chuck shot that teeny little Blackberry, he was just, it was going right through it. And I was hit him. I was saying, hit him again, hit him again. And it just kept going through him. I guess you got to get the right bullets. And he's nuts. Vision, what make a model 308? I love shooting through. I like the 308 too. Any word of Glock producing 10 millimeter Gen 5? That's the question. We, I'm wondering about that. I don't think they've put out any teasers, but because uh, Felton was thinking about getting the, uh, the Glock 20, um, but he's thinking maybe this fall they'll announce the, the Gen 5. I think they will. They haven't teased out anything, but it makes sense. I think they are going to have a Gen 5. I, I hope they do. I have a Glock 19. Gen 5s are better triggers. Yes, they are. They're much better. 308 cheap. Up here, 308 is cheaper than almost anything else. Alaska Ammo shout out. Chook, I'm a hillbilly. So is Chuck. I got the Gallant Bucket Bullets. They are coated lead and will never use them again. The lead fouling is horrible. Oh, the coating isn't working then. Either high-tech coating or powder coat keeps lead fouling down. Chica-wise, but it's not completely stopping it, I'm guessing. I have separate heads and dies for 9mm and 410. They are the same dies. All oh, right, because you just use the same lab time saying that. You use the same dies. 7mm ruins a white tailor merely every time with nozzle or partitions. Too much damage. I actually like too much damage sometimes because I uh, I shot a caribou at 80, oh, it must have been like 60 yards with a 168 grain Hornaday SST super performance. And the exit hole was literally like that. Like you could stick your fist into the exit hole. So it did uh, lose too much meat, but it was nice just to have it drop because... I've also shot a caribou with the 30 out six, I don't know, power points or something. It went, you know, perfect through both lungs. And then it runs 200 yards as fast as it can and through little valleys. And it'll take you two hours to find it when that happens. So I like that as a Hornaday ammo that just blows up like that, that red polymer tip, because then I know that I'm going to get my animal right there where it dropped. 
ruins a ton of meat. Yeah, I guess that's annoying, but I I'll take ruining some meat um, over spending four hours trying to find my animal. Ruger American 308. Oh, that's what he has. Of the Predator and 762 by 39 with mini 30 mags. Yeah, that is a good budget rifle. Every deer I have shot with 7 mil and 160 grade nozzle partitions hit the ground like a bag of bricks in first size hole. Probably just depends what ammo you're having. Nozzle partitions are doing the same thing, then interesting. That was probably close close up, I'm guessing. 140 grade nozzle. What optic do you run on your Marlin? Oh, I've got the, um, Justin's asking that. I've got the Vortex Scout because it's cheaper than any of the other Scout. And it's fine so far. It was 150 bucks. Um, if you get the Burris Scout scope, that's going to be, I don't know, 325, 350. If you get the Leopold Scout scope, that's going to be closer to 500. So I just went with Vortex to save some money. I'm glad I did. It's nice too. Um, I like the 130 grain partition on a 270. Try Underwood 308 and 150. Joey Bag of Donuts is asking, what's the best caliber for black bear? Oh, I would say 308 or 270 for black bear is good. That's a tough one. And a 30 out 6 will work fine too. That's a problem shooting Mosin surplus rounds. They go through the animal, through the tree behind it, and through another animal. Keep up the good work. God bless. Later, brother. All right, Jose, have a good one. Vortex for the win, I guess. Yeah, it's cheaper, I, and their quality's good. And even if it you break it or it messes up, Vortex has got an excellent return policy. So I'd just say save some money and go with Vortex. My dad kills black bears with his deer gun, 243, but I would take a 270 or 30-06, just me. Yeah, 243 will work, too. I would prefer a 270 as well. Yeah, no problem, Justin. 270 or 30-06, more power more powder. Shoot, just picked up my first hunting rifle for caribou. I'm pretty excited. The name is Hank. Well, what is it? What'd you get? I used Nazar Partitions, 140 grain, 7 millimeter. Didn't ruin my deer meat. Huh. He must have been close when he did that because uh, I was close when I did that with those uh, Hornadays and it uh, blew a giant hole out the back. TJ Balti, chook. Hope all is well, brother. Find the side to bite the bullet and get the KKM for the 20. Heard of Rock Your Glock SS guide rods? I haven't heard of those. But yeah, let me know how the KKM barrel. I, I'm still gonna get one some sometime. Chuck likes his. He's got a he's got the KKM for the Glock 40, though. Seven millimeters plenty for bull elk or black bear, no issues. So is a 270. Yeah, I agree with that. Killed mine with a 4570. What about just a 3030? Um, yeah, 30 30 will kill a black bear. Black bears die pretty easy. Um, just to be safe, I'd rather have a 270 or 4570 or something. It's 40 bucks for the guide rod for the Gen 4. Huh. Got a Remington 783 in 30 6. Got it for a real good deal. Now, is that similar because the 783 is like the that is the like the budget. I haven't heard of the 783. I've heard of the, uh, what is it, the 777. But, um, yeah, it sounds good. Um, 30 out 6 is great for caribou. I love whitetail hunting with the 3030. Never had a problem with either. But some of them run. I dropped my whitetail with the 3030. That was great. I love 3030s. Look into that Predator. 762 is cheap right now. Yeah, it's cheap up here. Chook, where did you order your PS365 XL? Looks like it's a great gun. Jonathan asked that. I ordered it on Gunbroker from oh, some pawn shop in some state. It was the first one that popped up. Um, it Super Pawn or something. Uh, let's see. Super Pawn, yeah. I'm ordering my... XL from Super Pond. Hopefully they ship it in the morning. Thinking of doing the same, getting a headset up for multiple calibers over time. I'm having trouble finding 
tree stores that sell it online. I got lucky then. I think they were just, they, like I said, uh, one, they had 700 this morning and they all sold out the distributor. And then I got on gun broker and uh, I probably just got lucky. There was that pawn shop. They had it there. They're selling like hotcakes right now. I have a 30, 30 with Buffalo born 190 grain. Nice. All right, guys. Yeah, it's been an hour and 10 minutes. That was a good chat, though. This is one of the better chats we've had in a while. So, yeah, be on the lookout for some new videos. So I'll, uh, I'll tease them out when the new guns come. I'm very excited about it. But uh, not sure what video will be out Saturday. If, if I don't get a new gun, I'll do the uh, review of the Chris Vector mag for 10 millimeter. But thank you all for tuning in. And I encourage you to subscribe. Help me out on Patreon. And keep up the good work, guys. I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Adios.